Good day, I'm Dean van der Westhuizen. I'm an eye surgeon working in, in Bombela in South Africa. Uh, and today I want to make just a small video on pterygium. Pterygiums essentially are small red fleshy growths that are very common. Uh, they occur normally on the inside of your eye, on the nasal side, and they are very common conditions especially in countries where their people are exposed to a lot of ultraviolet light. So the cause of pterygiums is not completely understood. Um, we know that uh, places where you're exposed to ultraviolet light and where there are harsh environments, so lots of dust, wind, pollen, uh, those kind of environments, pterygiums are more common and grow quicker and faster and larger. It's often referred to as surfer's eye particularly in Australia, and they've got some of the highest incidence of pterygiums in the world. And uh, essentially surfers aren't able to wear sunglasses when they're surfing. They've got the additional reflection of the, the sun off the water, and that's what puts them at higher risk of developing them. And the symptoms that you get from pterygiums are essentially an ocular discomfort in the form of foreign body sensation, a feeling of fullness, irritation, a tearing, and typically redness on the inside of the eye, and they typically flare up. So at times the pterygium may be less red, and at other times it's more red, and it can be related to sun exposure. Some people uh, describe alcohol exposure, or not sleeping well, or lack of sleep, and you, they notice that the pterygium flares up, becomes red and irritable, and the eye becomes teary. Now when they are very, very small, they are essentially more of a cosmetic concern than anything else, as well as the symptoms that they induce. But as they grow larger, they can become quite a problem because they start to grow onto the cornea. They move further and further onto the cornea. And when that happens, it starts to cause scarring in the cornea uh, and leads to astigmatism, which is uh, essentially uh, a problem with the optics of the eye that requires glasses to correct it. Um, and if they continue to grow even further, they can actually grow over the visual axis in severe cases and then cause severe vision loss. Um, but for the most part, uh, they, they don't cause severe vision loss, but more um, ocular irritation, discomfort. Um, and so in terms of managing them, uh, really we, it, it, it depends on the size of them and, and how symptomatic they are. Normally for the, the milder pterygiums that are mildly symptomatic and small, one needs to give topical lubrication, moisturization of the, of the surface of the eye. And sometimes topical uh, steroids can help to decrease the inflammation and make them smaller, but doesn't ever take them away. To prevent the progression to stop them from getting bigger and larger, avoidance of ultraviolet light is recommended. So wearing a hat, wearing sunglasses uh, to prevent uh, more ultraviolet light helps to slow down their progression. But if they continue to grow and they get large, the intervention there is a surgical intervention to remove the pterygium. When we do that surgery, the pterygium is removed and we take a small little bit of conjunctiva from the top surface of the eye uh, as an autograft and we place it over where the bed of that pterygium was um, to allow that area to heal and to prevent recurrence. Without an autograft, if you just remove the pterygium, uh, the recurrence rate is much higher than having an autograft. And that graft can be placed in there with sutures. Traditionally, it was sutured in place, which can cause a lot of irritation in the early post-operative period. But nowadays it's much more common for tissue glue, something like to seal to be used to glue that graft in place. It still is a bit uncomfortable after the surgery, but much more comfortable than using sutures. So I'm just gonna show you a few pictures here quickly. So here's just an example uh, of, of a pterygium. When it doesn't touch the cornea, we refer to it as a penguiculum. I know these are very strange names, but essentially, when it starts to move onto the cornea. So this here is again is a penguiculum. You can see here is some very um, uh, fibrous vascular tissue here. And as it moves onto the cornea, we start referring it to it as a pterygium. 
and here you can see this eye is very red and you can see it's moving from the nasal side onto the cornea and you can see that it's starting to grow across. Over time it can grow bigger and bigger and as it starts to move towards the visual, uh, the center of the vision, uh, this can be quite serious. You normally wouldn't want to leave these to this point. Um, otherwise, they can be quite large and severe cases. Like in this example, you can see um, that there's a very severe central pterygium um, that probably has resulted in irreversible uh, scarring there. Um, so what we would do is remove this fleshy material off the surface, this conjunctiva and these blood vessels. And then from the top part of the eye over here, just under the eyelid, we take a small piece of conjunctiva, of healthy conjunctiva, and we place it in the bed there and we glue it in place. Just to give you an example of what that looks like, here's an example. You can see in the first um, image, this is the pterygium before surgery. In the first day after surgery, the eye can be quite red. Um, and then after a week, it normally goes a slightly yellow color, very similar to a bruise. If you bruise on your arm, it's quite dark, it starts to become more yellow, and then it settles down. Um, and then by week two, three, four, you can see that that part of the eye is healed very nicely. Graft is in position and the eye has whitened up. In this period, there are some eye drops to use. Normally drops need to be taken about four times a day uh, and we see you after four weeks to ensure the eyes settle down. And so that's the basics of pterygiums. Obviously, as usual, uh, you'll need to speak to your eye doctor to make sure um, of what's the right direction for your eye. Thanks for listening.